Welcome and thank you everyone for the support on the last videos. A thousand subscribers. I never I actually never thought I'd get that many. I appreciate it and I hope you guys all are enjoying the videos. My favorite comments from my last video were the ones challenging and questioning the way I did things. So today I wanted to answer one of those questions of why even use AI when we could simply make rules and do the image processing. So today I'm going to create an image processing bot that can play the Dino Run game without using any AI at all. Answering the question, why use AI? We also have a special challenge at the end of this video for anyone who can beat my bot using just image processing and rules. Let's jump right in. The game I'm going to show you this concept on is a simple side scroller called Dino Run. Now if you've ever had a crappy internet connection like me living out in the middle of nowhere, you've probably seen it before. If you're in a Chrome browser and your internet connection fails or you don't have an internet connection, it'll pop up this little game that allows you to play as a dinosaur jumping through what appears to be a desert. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same screen grab technique that we used in our Fall Guys bot, except we're not going to put it through a neur neural network. As someone suggested, why use a neural network when you could simply just create rules? So you can see here that we're going to have to detect cactuses to jump over. So once a cactus gets a certain distance from our dinosaur, we're going to have to jump over that cactus. You can also see here that there's some groups of four cactuses. So we're going to have to let it get close enough that when we jump, we actually make it over the cactus as well. As the game continues, and I'll speed this up a little bit, this is just me playing the game. You can see that we're also going to have pterodactyls at some point, and we're going to have to duck under those. So again, we're going to detect the pixel as it comes up to our screen and duck under that as it approaches. Now, once you get f even farther into the game, you'll notice it does something pretty tricky that caused my original bot to go a little crazy, and that is it's going to switch to a dark background where the objects are light. So we're going to have to find a workaround for this as well. So if you want to follow along with me, go ahead and download the code from the GitHub here. We're going to open up create data and then get our environment set up however you want to set it up. Here I'm playing in a half screen and however you set this up is going to be half how you have to run your bot. So I'm going to push print screen on my keyboard and I'm going to get the area where I want my bot to look. And I'm going to update these values here to fit into that area. So I'm just going to pop open paint, paste in my print screen. Now obviously these values already match up for me, but you can see in the bottom left corner there, it will show you the pixel values. So I wanted a range from 85 on the X coordinate. So that's about there to 715, which is right about here. And then my Y coordinate, I start at 350, somewhere in here and go all the way to 500. Now, obviously you could shrink these up. There's nothing happening like below the ground. So I think I just picked some round numbers here when I was setting up the bot, but you're going to want to define a similar area here for your, whatever your values are for those pixels. Now, once we have that, we can go ahead and run this program while we're playing the game. And it's going to take some screenshots and put them into this image folder for us. And we can also kind of start to see what our bot is seeing. Now it's going to see just that area that we defined and it's going to convert it instead of being grayscale you can see there's some different values it's just gonna be pure black or pure white for every pixel so let's go ahead and run this you can see here it says saving pictures because it's saving the pictures as we go and you can see the view that we've defined now it's saving these pictures so we're gonna be able to use these pictures to find the pixel values that we need to jump over things like the cactus and we just want to play far enough where we can also see the pterodactyls come in. So we can define when we need to duck under a pterodactyl as well. And there is a pterodactyl we need to duck under. So now we should have everything we need. We can press the E key. That will kill this program. And now we have plenty of pictures to define our values. 
Now the only thing we need to define is what to jump over, what to duck under, and we also want to define this end button here. So we're gonna pop open our next program, which is the program that actually runs the bot. It is called Run Episodes. And an episode is just a single run of the game itself. That's what I'm using for the run here. So you can see here, we gotta define some values inside of this program for our bot to run correctly. And that's pretty easy. So let's pop open an image in paint. So the first thing we wanna do is define our look ahead amount. Now here for each episode, I'm picking a random look ahead amount from 80 to 120 to kind of figure out what's the best. So 80 pixels ahead somewhere in here and 120 pixels ahead somewhere in here. So it's picking a random value in between those two to decide how early it jumps. Now I also have a speed up amount. So this is how many loops this program goes through before we increase that look ahead. Cause as the game speeds up, we're going to have to look farther and farther ahead so we can jump in time. So you guys can set those values to whatever you think is appropriate. The important part here, we wanna update our screen view to match what we chose in Create Data. So take whatever you found in Create Data for your bot's vision and update those values. We have to handle when the screen colors invert as it does sometimes like here. So we're gonna check to see if we're on a white background or a black background. And we're gonna invert the colors based on that for our rules. So we don't have to have a rule for a white background and a rule for a black background. So I picked a random spot. Now on the image, the Y coordinate is first. Don't get confused there. And the X is second. So Y is 144. So I'm checking down here where nothing changes. So you can see down in this area, these pixels never change. Nothing changes there until the background is flipped. So if our background flips, then we're gonna switch the values of zero and white to handle the case where the colors are inverted. So you'll wanna pick a value for this somewhere in this bottom area below where the dirt specs are. Now let's go ahead and look at the duck first. So we're gonna duck under the pterodactyl and that's just gonna happen if something shows up on pixel 54 and whatever our look ahead amount is. So if we slide down on this image to pixel 54, we can see that that would be right in the middle of the pterodactyl. So you wanna update this value to be whatever is right in the middle of the pterodactyl for you. Now let's open up an image with a cactus. You can see here we test pixel 92 to see if there's anything in front of our dinosaur that we need to jump over. So you'll need to update this value as well. So if we slide down, you can see on pixel 92, somewhere in here, we can start to see a cactus. So we need to jump. So you're gonna update that value there to whatever the cactus would be for you. And finally, you need to update the values for testing to see if it's the end of the episode. So how I test for the end of the episode is I take a look at this replay button and if that's on the screen, then I know we've reached the end of the episode. So you can see here, I do that by testing these values. So the first one I test is 395 and 45. So I'm looking right in the triangle here of this replay button to see if it's white. So if there's white here and then black on 370, 35, like somewhere in the corner up here, then I know that we have hit the replay button. So I test a value somewhere in here, somewhere here for zero, and then finally somewhere in the other corner or somewhere up in this corner for another black value. So that's how I'm testing. So you're gonna have to update those pixels as well. So you want one in the white and two in the black so you know that you've hit this replay button. Now, once you have all those values updated, you're ready to run the bot. Here's our best run. And I'll show you some statistics along the way of how our bot did.
Now, if you think you can improve this bot in any way, please do. If you create a bot using just rules, no JavaScript hacks or anything like that, just image processing and beat me, I'll give you a shout out in the next video and a special role in our Discord for Bot Beater. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, keep coding.